you sure you know the destination? Um, one sec, one sec. You're just staring at your phone. Did you get the text, date, and location and address? How does man know it's not a setup? One second, shit, I'm getting fed up with all these never ending questions. Ever since we left the station, come like you're scared, fam. Scared. When we were riding in that stolen whip, you were shaking so much you could barely load the clip. I caught a body like it fell from the sky. Then went raving, or come to man with no scare talk. This is next man's estate, and I'm just anxious. I need to get back to self. Just hold it down, we're going to do business. Pick up the strap, drop the money, and bounce. Say no more, forget he's your boy. I wouldn't say that. I swear that's the house. What? He's your boy, you said you two used to go to school, you trusted the guy. No, I said we had a phone call. He must have been high. Fam, you said you used to go to school with you. You're messing with my head. I knew only with you would be something to regret. But there's nothing to be said to doubt this. I hope you ain't shook. That same car's been following since man arrived. I know you ain't looked. What car? Forget the car, there's some any younger. Look at them, they ain't crooks. Just hold it down, the youth's cool. We swore for about two weeks. I met him on Facebook. Facebook? I can't wait till this is heard in the ends. You're gonna be out here, no car or protection. Not to mention all this money buying a strap from your virtual friend. If the stops, I'm gonna punch you up. It's not gonna flop, it will go with the plan. Yeah, I'm still gonna punch you up. Who paints the front door of graffiti? And they got boards at every window. Are you sure this is the right house, bro? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. I can't put all the blame on him, though. Not knowing what was on the other side of that door shouldn't have made me turn back then. But I haven't got the heart to not. Soldier is strong through adversity. I'm from a dark place, look at this scarred face. Backing down doesn't work for me, I'm hard to shock. We approached the front door cautiously. It opened up before we had a chance to knock. Darkness covered all angles of the hallway, there wasn't a thing to see. Except the living room table, supporting a bottle of Henny. Surrounded by plastic cups. Illuminated by the influx of light coming from the garden door. They look like unfinished drinks to me. The reaper looking like appeared from the abyss, smoking a spliff. Hey yo, you bring the pee. Hey yo, you got the thing. Hey yo, you bring the pee. Yeah, man's got that. Cool. How you know niggas don't get a thing for free? We forced that moment of friendly laughter. The bag turned empty after. He pointed us towards the living room table where we offered a shot of Henny. Nah. He bent down behind the sofa, picking up a bag. Dropped it on the table in a nonchalant manner. But Bridget looked at me like I told you so. We sat down to have a look. As expected, it was as empty as my hope of getting back to self alive. I looked up at the youth. He took out a knife and was surrounded by what could have been ten or a thousand guys. Either way, were outnumbered. I look at my boy, he's looking back at me. I see the fear deep in his eyes. We both smelt the scent of death in the atmosphere. Henny bottle near. I felt the intense urge to grab it. My boy already planned it. He picked it up and smashed it against the wooden table, started pointing at them in self defense. This fool brought us here. And only now we've got this wealth of sense. But these shoots were on no negotiations. Everyone's holding something except for me, and we know they're saying. Every man for themselves. Having said that, my boy is looking real selfish with that broken glass on the Hennessy. To my front, I see six blades approaching my torso with energy. I've lived by the knife, so maybe this was meant to be. 1.5 gallons of blood in a human body, and it's starting to empty me. I saw colours you'd only get to see on LSD, so now I'm dancing around the table, dodging hands, but blades pierce my skin like it's made of butter. I'm trying to hide behind my friend, he's got the only form of self defence. While I'm in between consciousness, and my temperature's rising higher than beige in summer. I'm seeing bodies hit the floor as well with images of my mum and my baby brother. Who's to blame in a world where buying a gun for protection is a social trend? I thought I'd live to see more than such a soulful end. My near-death experience was interrupted by my so-called friend. With a moment of inspiration, he smashed through the garden door and sped up like Fritz Flintstone, no looking back. That actually shocked me. Left me with this army of defeat. Heart on its last beat. I jumped through the same door trying to keep up to him. Having to put pressure on these knife wounds and tucking internal organs back in my body. I keep two eyes on my associates and the third and those I call my best friend. When I pay attention, I see true intentions. Intention. Thank you.
It's like someone dropped a nuke on a nuclear family. Turned all these houses into broken homes. I thought it was only my mum that was home alone till I realised most of my friends lack father figures. Fast forward to now, it may explain why she plays the game of love with an older guy and most young hearts are bitter. Let's rewind to a time I was looking like baby. I used to hate him on that shady vibe like he split. I wonder if he even kissed me goodbye. No, I don't on second thoughts. I just wish he would take me with him. Am I not good enough? Maybe he didn't see a family when he looked to us. Vicarious stories suggest he's out chasing women or got sent straight to prison. He could have followed the rules to stay. He chose to walk away. So in my mind, he's automatically made a villain. I'm a spitting image of him, which was starting to see the sense of self-hate living within like, I hate these features, this nose, eyes and lips. I'm pacing around my house hiding pics, wanting to hire henchmen for my reflection, anger and confusion, choosing to overlook the fact that mum deserves a little respect because part of me blamed her. I don't know what forced the divorce. Word of mouth is inside that tells tales of vivid fistfights and mum's this figured smile tries to hide it for me. Dad's not around to share his side of the story. It's a ripple effect, a ripple effect. Cause father finally made a phone call. Arranged to meet me at Oval near the traffic lights. Accompanied there by my older brother. It may seem like I'm the passive type. Up until now I only know my mother so I say very little. And my stares are intense. Sitting in MACD's on opposing seats. There's an air of distance. What is this? Ponding time. I share the burden of mum's broken heart with unknown causes. I'm cautious and so putting up a fair resistance. He's trying to break it down. This could take a while. He came prepared with incentives that make me smile. Cause on ends, I hang around in hand-me-downs. Young or old, that ain't my style. So I'm trusting the vision. As I rush home to tell my siblings, I'm getting new clothes, new trainers, and an 8310. That's just the beginning. Mum comes in to listen. She's firm, but subtle. Just wait and see, trying not to burst my bubble. It's her that picks up these pieces, drenched in tears, I'm puzzled. He said he was coming. Third week in a row, he didn't show. All these broken promises get planted in the soul. Watered by embarrassment, growing to trust issues. I should have settled for imagination. It was better when I didn't know. I didn't expect you to live up to Jesus, just to sit up and teach us what it means to be a father, what it means to be a son. This part-time parent approach can easily become the blueprints for the way I treat my seeds. Both hands on my heart, I could never expose them to. I can't even verbalize the feelings. This next moment left me hurt and I need healing. Those negatives felt as a child is the engine that lurks behind my demons. Imagine, I'm smiling at a picture of me on the knee of Father Christmas as mom tells me I'm going to stay with my father for Christmas. If I can unwrap a piece of myself from under his tree, I can tick off half of my wish list. I see clear coordination at core, but we differ when I skim the surface. I'm introverted, he's a talker. Funny, looks like Chris Rock. We're en route to his house in the car listening to hip hop. He gets out, he walks in first, I'm behind him, I'm in shock. I did not expect to see a ready-made family. What a thing to discover. They greet me like the star of the show. I feel like an extra amongst my dad, two kids and a mother. Was I not good enough? Maybe he didn't see a family when he looked to us. See, I'm older now with a wiser perspective on who's to blame. Maybe his actions hurt more because I was new to pain. Around the time I used to drain any bit of masculinity from mum's feminine nature. The malice towards another melanin maker had never been greater, it was crazy. I had to read internally like a book as I grew, took the right cue. I learned to love you because I look just like you. Made from half of your cells in fact, so anything less was a self-attack. No explanation, let's just call this necessary excavating to destroy any roots through into revival. The damage only gets worse if I continue the cycle. The damage only gets worse if I continue the cycle. Thank you.
You know when you like a female? Every time you see her, your face lights up, she gives you chills, it's lame. You're sharpening your skills and game to tame her. Names instilled and chained in any fool you can muster up. It's just your luck. You follow behind her like a shadow. Wishing for a kiss, even if it's just a little peck. You fantasize with detail. You know when you like a female when it's not her heels to blame. You see past the facade. She can't get enough of your wordplay, punchlines and bars and still don't know what you meant her for. She laughs harder when you're present, she's never bored. Every other girl you measure for the qualities she has, I feel your pain. You know when you like a female when she doesn't feel the same. So right now you're gassed because you're together, but you're not together. You're together because you're in the same room kind of together. To get her is your endeavor. Praying it doesn't end ever until she says she's going. Your goal is to go in for a tight hug. She gives you a random high five. <laughs> she's clever. Welcome to the friend zone. Even though you like her, maybe it isn't fate. If you show her love daily and she doesn't reciprocate, I get it. You want to grab your world, grab her world and integrate it. With hopes of strolling integrate memories that illustrate how perfect you are for each other. And those late night combos help facilitate the romantic connection. She told you she had a lot on her plate. Correction. Mr. Right now got in between her chopsticks like a Chinese buffet. She put it all on her plate for him. He didn't need a knife for starters. Didn't have to fork out any money for the main. He got to eat it twice, it was saucy. He went straight in for the spoon. Got sexual intercourse with a bit on the side. Dessert. Then deserted her. Broken heart was the only thing left over when she called you. Yeah, bro. You got the leftovers. She only called you to absorb her tears like a sponge about to clean her dirty dish. That's the only reason you both seem to be in sync. Let that sink in, it's a big thing. I hear what you're saying, you're trying to take it slow and tread smooth. Doesn't it piss you off hearing her talk about another guy? Especially when you start to miss her as soon as you press and cool. You're the best fool. She might be waiting for you to make moves like, if not the first time, oh this is take two. But remember, she doesn't chase you. I feel like if you was rum and she was coke, she wouldn't chase you. Things get mad when certain men's around. Trying to get a piece of her, but not the kind of piece Gandhi found. Girls would be girls. So her flirtatious ways make you question if the relationship state has changed. You're all jealous in the corner and still you hang around. This must be the apex then. Cause she's asking you what colour to paint her nails. What dress to wear when entertaining males. You're turning into a gay best friend bro, stand your ground. It's a cold place, I swear. The, the friends are. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you.